A special shout out to our sponsors. The Trust Restaurant Group of San Diego are now fully open for business. We're ready to serve you at our flagship restaurant, Trust, Rare Society, Cardellino, and Ford Oak. Executive chef and co-owner Brad Wise wants to share his love of good eats with our San Diego community. Chef Brad uses locally sourced ingredients that change with the season. Trust staff's aim is to provide their patrons with great food, cocktails, wine, and service. We invite you to come to any of our fine restaurants for a meal of a lifetime. In good food, we trust. Product of Rugby, the official workout t-shirt for the American rugby player. You can help the Product of Rugby charity. With every item sold, $5 goes to feed the American children. The San Diego Legion presents the Quick Tap Rugby Podcast with your hosts, C.J. Johnson, San Diego Legion's own Nate Augsburger, and Celebrity Chef Rock. Hi, welcome back to another episode of Quick Tap Rugby Online Podcast. I'm your host, C.J. Like always, I'm joined by my favorite rugby player, MLL star, now USA Rugby World Qualifier, right? Did I say that right, Nate? You said it all right. You said it all right. Rugby World Qualifying Team. That's Woo! right. That's right. That's right. Welcome to the welcome, Nate. My brother, how you doing? Also Man. joining us is Chef Rock, the celebrity chef, host of the Chef Rock Show, our favorite chef. Even though he keeps telling me he's gonna bring me some food to cook. Actually, what I'm what, what I'm requesting was some pizza dough so I can make my own pizza, but he ain't never gonna do it. Chef Rock, how you doing, my brother? Oh. No, I'm doing great. You know, I'm actually uh, making the dough right now. We're waiting for it to rise. I'll send some over uh, by Uber Eats or whatever those companies that deliver for you, brother. Hey, 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 it. Then it's up you to you. You ain't got to lie to me, brother. You ain't got to lie to me. Nate, I let's, get right, let's get right to it, my brother. <laughs> Good to see you guys. <laughs> we hey, got, you listen, too, Chef. Let's get, let's, let's get right to it. Nate, so listen, you got a special interview today. We're going to cut away too. But most importantly, my man, talk to me about what the USA, USA Eagles are doing, how you doing. Last last time I saw you, man, you were beat up a little bit. But when I watched the game, you put your head in there, brother. I loved it, man. I was telling you, I was telling yeah, my friends, yeah. everybody saw it. That's my man right there, homie. He gets in there, takes care of business. So talk to me about it, Nate. Tell me what's going on. Yeah. So so USA, we we uh, we've locked in at the North America's number one. So our first uh-huh. first round of Rugby World Cup qualifiers. And now we are going to go play Uruguay, uh, where we have the potential if we beat them in an aggregate. So we got two games with them, one home, one away. If we beat them in an aggregate, then we'll be the uh, Rugby World Cup qualified America's number one team, um, which is huge. And it's really important because we'll then draw a pool, which will be France, the, uh, the, the home, the home Rugby World Cup, the next World Cup in 2023 is in France. So we'd be with France. New Zealand, Italy, us, and then uh, South Africa, I think, number one. So it would probably be a team like Namibia, um, which that if you compare that to our last pool that we had at Rugby World Cup, um, there's definitely a bit more of an opportunity to get a couple wins out of that. Okay. And uh, so we're looking forward to that, man. But obviously one step at a time here. So we got Uruguay coming up in a couple weeks. We'll play them in Colorado again. And um, and yeah, we'll look to take those guys out. What Wait, did, did you know? say that the final was in 2023? The the Rugby World Cup will be in 2023. Yes. So you guys are playing along. Is it like double elimination or something when it so, gets to so the World Cup? The format it's it's if you are the top three teams in your pool, you qualify for the following World Cup. Uh, USA has uh-huh. never done that. And so I'd say, you know, as someone who's been on the team for a while, I always love being the first to do something. So I'd, I'd say that would be a huge accomplishment for us to go get a couple wins at the next World Cup mm-hmm. awesome. and qualify in top three. And then obviously, yeah. you know, um, we can set our hopes even higher to, to get into a quarterfinal for the first time as a USA team as well. Wow. So we are one of the teams that kind of has to play into the World Cup. Um and then there's other teams like Canada that we just beat who they have to actually go a, a longer route to qualify and they won't be able to qualify until like a year before the competition. Okay, so, 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 okay. so tell me, take, what, what would you take away from the two games you played with Canada? What, are you guys ready for for, for the next the next round? Or what did you learn? Did you make some improvements? What kind of adjustments did you learn from that? For sure. I think, it, you know, 
the boys played in July and they played against England and Ireland. Right. And, you know, before they played England, I think they had like two or three sessions and we hadn't got together as a team since 2019 world cup because wow. of COVID. Um, so long story short, we're, we're getting cohesion now, which sure. is really important as a team, you know, and um, I'd say the biggest learning and, and Canada and Uruguay are two different opponents. Um, but you know, our Northern rivals, obviously well-respected, um, but Uruguay, a bit, a bit different preparation, a bit more feisty. Uh, they're a bit more willing, a bit more hard-nosed, I, I would say. So we're going to have our hands full there, and we got to come with it uh, ready and prepared. But the fir first game, we all just owned our performance from the coaches to, to the players, a really disappointing loss away. Um, but you, but you lost it. You lost the first game, but the points didn't matter because it was, it was accumulation of points that mattered. So, right. so you learned from that experience. And you went to the next game and just and just balled out. Yeah, we gave him a thirteen point spot essentially, um, yeah. which which wasn't ideal. I think that probably gave Canada a lot of life, uh, but we sucked it out of them. We 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 got back to really, <laughs> you know we got back to really just you know being being a bit harder on ourselves as, as a team and just like you know, holding ourselves a bit more accountable, whether it's just the skill execution at training or, you know, being on the money with our, with our preparation, studying and stuff like that. So we, we just got tighter as a group, which was great to see and, and exactly what I expect from us as a USA team. That's awesome, man. I, mean, I, I like I said, I watched one of the games actually and a part of the other one. And, and I was uh, totally impressed with your play and the team's play. And, you know what I'm saying? So I was, I was definitely happy with it. So Listen, man, talk about us who's coming up on, on this, this podcast this week. Um, talk about your guests, talk about your relationship with the guests, and then we'll, we'll launch into that interview. Yeah, so, so the guest this week, we got Nathan Sylvia, um, and he's a four-year Legionnaire. He's, he's one of the top two guys with the most appearances for Legion. And, uh, yeah, he's just one of those guys, man, you'll get to see in the, in the interview that – He's worked really hard. Like this opportunity fell into his lap and he's taken it full bore. He, and um, I love him to death, man, because every time he's on the field, I love a guy who's ready to put his head in places that other people don't want to. He loves the bang and, he, and he's super fit. So I, I always have a lot of uh, appreciation for this guy and a lot of the boys on the team respect who he is and, and what he brings to the team. He's a big guy, right? Yeah, he's a front row. Yeah, you guys yeah. noticed that I, I I spread love to the props to the floor. exactly. No, you do a good dogs. job. They're my protection yeah. out there. You know, yeah, exactly. It's, yeah. it's it's interesting you tell about someone put their head in places they don't belong. Man, you put your head everywhere, bro. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I, I even after it got beat up, I get scared <laughs> right. for you sometimes, man. I'm looking at you like, dude, what are you doing, bro? You don't I, have a helmet on. <laughs> I probably, that was like one of the worst headshots that I've ever had. But you know what? What do you do? You just you just yeah. embrace it. You know, I got elbowed in the nose and. There was oh, was there, it was an game. elbow. Oh, yeah, wow. it, was, it was an elbow. So mm -hmm. I got elbowed. I was leaking. Went and got my stitches, got back in the game. That's and, unbelievable. Uh, You're the man. Kinda, <laughs> that's kind of what the players do. I, yeah, for, yeah. for me, homie, I was living with that. You go get stitches. I'm on the sideline, coach. Yeah, you know said, can you bring me some? <laughs> yeah. bring, hey, bring me some. Hey, bring me some Gatorade, coach. I'm just yeah. going. I'm just going to relax here for the rest of the game because I already, I already yeah. earned my stripes. I already earned my stripes. You know what I'm saying? I got stitches. So yeah. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's my Augsburg, badge of honor. Augsburgers are known to have very strong heads. Yeah, those <laughs> are cement face. Cement well, face. Now, well, now it's proven for sure. Yeah. All right. <laughs> hey, 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 so Nate, let's let's get right into that interview, and then we'll come back and talk about it in a few minutes. It's a beautiful day here in San Diego. I am in Mission Hills at Fort Oak, a wonderful restaurant, a part of one of our uh, sponsors, Trust Restaurant Groups. And uh, we have an enjoyable meal here and I'm actually joined by one of my favorite people, <laughs> longtime legionnaire, been here day one since day A1. One. Day one, A1. 36 games, that's one of the top two people on the team. Mm -hmm. yep. And uh, his name is Nathan Sylvia. Yeah, thanks for having me. Like, What's I'm honored, happening? I'm honored to be on the show. Yeah, uh, you're the man. <laughs> you're the man. This guy puts in the work. So, Nate Dog, the season's been over. Uh, yep. We'll we'll jump right into it, man. What's your day to day look like now? So yeah, so now, um, well, during the season, I was working part time uh, as a software developer for a very small defense contractor, working with like uh, flight simulators. So 
now since the season's over, you know, there's not rugby going on for me at least. Um, I'm switching over to full time, so I've been just working. So I'll work eight hours a day, and then in the mornings I'll, uh, you know, do my workout, oh, do yeah. my training. Yeah. I saw him in the as gym this saw, morning. Yeah, as we hung out this morning, worked out this morning. It was good. That's right. So, all right. So you stay pretty dedicated to your rugby stuff in the off season, even though yeah. you got the full time gig. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I really, I can't like. It's weird, like going from being so active than just like sitting in like a desk for like eight hours. Like I can't do that first and then work out afterwards. Like I'm just like I'm restless <laughs> in the yeah. chair. Like I'm just like, oh, I it's, should be. I don't know. It should be doing something. So it's I like the classic. First. It's like win, yeah. win the morning, win the day. Like yeah. I don't know. That, that's me and. That's definitely what it feels like during the season. We're up early, yeah. we get right in. Yeah. You do it between sessions, you're on your computer actually yeah. doing your part-time work and then yeah. you probably do some at the end of the day as well. Yep. Yeah. Do you, how do you feel like, how do you approach it mentally or, or physically as a player through the season knowing that there's other guys out there that are full-time and you know on other teams, not even just our team, but there's other guys that are out there, they get the opportunity to be full-time rugby players yeah. Yet you're you're someone who's got to do the part time gig, and obviously you're still pretty much full time rugby player. What's right, the yeah. dynamic like? How do you approach it? Um, well, for me, it actually helps me out because, like, I was I mean, I mean before I was playing for Legion, like I was just a full time just software developer, like just playing club rugby. So like I always I had that first, and then I was like, okay. Well, I'm gonna try to play rugby now. Like it never was playing professional rugby wasn't really like. I don't know, an option for me coming out of college. Like I was just gonna play club rugby and just kind of, you know, have fun, play at the highest levels I can. But going into, you know, playing professional rugby now, I always felt like I kind of needed that, um, like a professional, like, or like other other job as well. Yes, going yes. On. I mean, as, as we all do, like we all know we're not gonna be playing rugby, you know, forever. That gets overlooked a lot. Yeah. It, it's like, you know, I'm, I'm always happy that I spent the four years to get my, my my degree, like yeah. go to college, you know, and I know that's not everybody's route, but I do get a lot of, a lot of really good takeaways from that, mm -hmm. which yeah. have helped me with my rugby career. And that's, that's exactly what you're highlighting there. Yeah. You and know? so, and so for like, like I just recently um, got this job before this last season, but for like, uh, for like year three, for example, like I was just, I was, I was full-time rugby for that season, mm. but I was always just kind of like, I don't know. I was always kind of like nervous, like, dang, like I need to, you know, continue like kind of like my employment for, for when I am done playing, like that I can just like kind of jump right into like something or, you know, I'm not gonna have a big gap. Right. So that, that, that's important to me. And so getting this gig that, you know, works with rugby and I was very transparent with them with the, with mm -hmm. the, uh, with the schedule and everything. And then they, they let me, uh, let me play and work. I mean, I'm really lucky in it. Shout out really to all the businesses. It. Shout out to all the businesses that let the boys play rugby. I know, seriously. <laughs> you know, it's that, that open up that door yeah. opportunity. Yeah. And it took a while <laughs> to find one. A lot of interviews. <laughs> <laughs> was there anybody, who, who was like your biggest influencer to like push you to say like, you should be playing for Legion or you should try and play in the MLR? Well, I mean, like, I mean, I just, I mean, how I got recruited, I guess, is I wasn't really like, Oh, you should try out for MLR. Um, There's a couple injuries year one to mm. the front row, and I actually got hit up on uh, Facebook Messenger by, <laughs> yes. by our good friend Zach Tess. He just <laughs> hit me up and said, "Hey, you want to you want to come down and, and come off the bench?" <laughs> literally, I can't. I literally come off the bench for a, a Friday game. I literally flew down that Friday morning, got picked up straight to the locker room. <laughs> Hodes brings me out. Remember, in front of everyone in the Warren room, is just like. <laughs> Yeah, here's Nate Sylvia. Like, <laughs> he's been playing really good club rugby up in the Bay Area. He's one of their like one of the best in the league for their their league. He's gonna come and do a good job for us. And then, kind of <laughs> thrown pushed, to the wolves, pushed me in, and I'm just like hanging out with like, you know, you know, guys like yourself or like you know, like Ryan. Like these are like guys who I know, like Eagles. I'm just kind of just like thrown in that, <laughs> thrown in that mix. I hope it was a warm welcome. Yeah, well, I came when I came in. I came in in 15 minutes. Scrum pen. They kick a penalty, and, they, and then they're up by two points with like 15 minutes left. So You're like, like, no. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, it's gotten better since then. I mean, at this stage, all right. So pretty much, I always say this: like anybody who's been around for for all four years yeah. is like an MLR expert at this yeah. stage. So for for you 
two things you love about MLR and one thing you think that could be improved? Yeah, I would have to say one, like, I just love that every year, like the competitiveness just like keeps increasing, mm. you know, like I just love like knowing that like we're all getting better, like the teams, like all the players and like America as a whole, we're all getting better. And just knowing that I'm like playing at that, that top level in the States. I think that like, I take a lot of pride in that. Amen. So do and, I. Uh, and I also, I love that like, you know, we're working on like community outreach, like getting, building up like an academy, building up like the community and like getting like, you know, like, I mean, you, you coach, I mean, I, I've yep. coached some teams, coach Mustangs, right. You know, build up those guys, you know, these kids now, but they're going to be, you know, future legionnaires, future Eagles. And I think that's really cool. And it's only going to help like rugby as a whole in the U S for sure. Um, as far as like improvements go, I know there's like already a huge effort to do it, but it just, you know, it's probably, you know, we all know it just like getting, just still getting like the MLR like out there. Yeah. Like, it's still, it's still hard. Like, and I think like with the emphasis on like, you know, getting it more like more primetime spots, like on TV, Yeah. you know, like getting it out there more because like, I mean, we got the rugby network this year, which was amazing. And like, it's awesome. They have so many games up there for free, but um, like, you know, if you, if you have like, you know, People find Rugby Network from people who know rugby, tell them, oh, hey, check out this Rugby Network, you know, you know, they already know rugby, so they can give it to you. But, like, we're people who have, like, no connection to rugby whatsoever. Like they're, Yeah, they're the no ones one, that we're missing, really. You know, yeah. They're, they're not going to look for the Rugby Network. And, I, so. I, yeah, we've done a great job of, of getting at least, like, the final, you know. Yeah. I know that in 2019 there's pretty good television ratings yeah. based on people watching in their homes on te on TV, you know. Um, but I'm with you on that. I think that that is one area because the exposure has, has gotten way better with the Rugby yeah. Network. I've said it on the podcast oh, yeah. multiple times. It's amazing. Um, it's really good. And, you know, even my dad was in the hardware store um, back in Minneapolis and he saw one of my old high school teammates. <laughs> I think a guy who was a senior when I was a freshman. Yeah. And he saw him and he's like, oh, yeah. And the, and the guy was like, oh, yeah, I, I, I got the Rugby Network. I'm watching the games. Nice. It's really That's cool. cool, you know? So. Yeah. You're right. In the rugby community, everyone's loving it and chomping at the bit at it. It's how do we get the people on the outside who don't even know what rugby is. Yeah. I think you, you hit it on the head. The community aspect for, for me is a, a huge part of that, you know, and teams, teams, you know, organizations actually benefit from their community involvement, which yeah. is, which is great as well. Yeah. You know, and so, and I think about, you know, do you do you have any insight on Qualcomm and potential for San Diego in the future? I mean, so how big Qualcomm is where Qualcomm is, they're building a new yeah. stadium. Yes. Right? And that's gonna be San Diego State's yes. yeah. field, right? Yeah. I, I got a I got a good feeling that like at some point San Diego could fit right in there. That'd be awesome. Wouldn't it be, be great? So, awesome. so SDSU, same colors, same, you know, like how hard would it be to it squeeze? Be, it'd be too easy. <laughs> it would be too easy. And I think it's supposed to be like, what, 15? I think it's like 15 or 10,000. It's not like overly aggressively big. I'm not sure, yeah. Their college program isn't overly aggressively big anyways, yeah. right? So, yeah, I look forward to seeing how that plays out. And obviously for like the San Diego Legion fans and stuff. Torero is home and I hope it stays home, but at some point down the road, we're going to outgrow that yeah. sucker yeah. and hopefully Qualcomm, you know, or whatever they choose to call it will yeah. be a good development for us. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Yeah, it'll definitely get there. Do you, where do you see the MLR in 20 years? I mean, I definitely see it, you know, at the same caliber as like, you know, like MLS, like that, that kind of same caliber, you know? Uh, like I said, with like the community outreach and stuff and like getting players built up through the system, like it's just going to create a, a bigger interest and, you know, bigger interest means more people are going to like pay attention to the league and what the teams, you know, the leagues are going to grow mm -hmm. more teams and like you said, like more stadiums and stuff. So yeah, I see the, you know. The future, the future's bright for the MLR for sure. We talking like action figures? <laughs> Maybe we talking bobble like bobbleheads first? Uh, yeah, all right, bobbleheads. <laughs> or they used to have the big head, the big head things. I think that was a San Diego Tropics thing, big where head. they had the bit, the um, sticks with the person's head on them. 
And you just like everybody in the stands that have those, I'd love to see those out yeah. and about. We can, be, we, can, we can make that work this year. Maybe. That'd be good. That'd be good. <laughs> everybody would love to see Adam Ashley Cooper and Matt Guito's <laughs> head on a stick, just like, yeah. Those would be selling. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. For sure. Um, so, you know, transitioning MLR and, and building up American players. Yeah. You have aspirations to, to play for the Eagles. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what does that look like? How do you how are you planning to, to achieve that goal? Um, well, I mean, like you know me, like I'm always, you know, I'm kind of like the stay low key, but always like still grinding kind of guy, you know. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, I'm just continuing to do that, like especially during this off season, just getting my work in, and uh, you know, once like you know once we all get back into like, you know, the group of things, you know, just continue pre-season. to improve preseason. I mean, I've improved every year, you know, with the competition and everything. I mean, you saw me year one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. You, been you've improving. definitely gotten better every, every year, <laughs> every year. So, so yeah, just continuing to improve. And like, I think it's also important, at least for me, for like mentally, like, just like, I want to, like, I know if I'm like playing good, like for like, I don't know if it sounds kind of weird, but like, I don't want to like worry about like, oh man, am I going to be good enough oh, to like I'm, make the Eagles? You know, I want to, I want to be good for Legion first, be good for. You put you your know, hand up by being team. good at what you're exactly. doing now. Like I want to win game, you know, of course I want to win games and be good for the Eagles, but you know, I know I'm going to get there by just, I want to win games for Legion and I want to win a championship and playing yeah. well, doing that. And I'll put my hand up. Yeah. It's like, so, how does that opportunity come up? Well, yeah. it's not by just dreaming and living and breathing that you want to be an Eagle. Yeah. It's what happens in between that almost like the process. Yeah. You've always been a very process oriented guy, right? Like take things one week at a time. Yeah. Like you said, you just try and get better and better. I think we, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of good guys that we've been around for the last four years who've, who, who have that approach. Right. Yeah. I mean, Ryan Ryan got his first start for the Eagles since 2018 this past weekend. I know, amazing. And he was lights out. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Lights but that out. was that was a long, hard journey for that guy yeah. to finally get back into that spot and take advantage of the opportunity. So, yeah, yeah I just you know I'd always encourage you, Nate Dog, just yeah. keep grinding away as you have been. Yeah. Cause you're a beast. Yeah. You, you you know my favorite thing about about you, Nate, is that when you come on, <laughs> bodies are hitting the ground. You know, like just you you love you day. love the breakdown and you love tackling. <laughs> I just like well, anybody who knows me. I yeah, get my you know just get my head and just like I don't know, just burrow in there somewhere. Like, that's <laughs> find a way. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Get around the pitch, yeah. hit some rucks, and tackle yeah. people. Yeah. yeah, that's my kind of guy. Yeah. That's my kind of guy. That's what we need. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Um, so you get married in October. Yes. All right. Coming up. You met Katie while you were playing in the MLR. Yep. Year yeah. two, year three. Year, year two. two. Year, year two. two. You met Katie, right? Yeah. I actually, I attribute because <laughs> so I met her the night after we beat Seattle in the rain in Torero. Oh. In that super rainy game. Yeah. So I was like, I was feeling confident. I was feeling good. So I kind of attribute that win to, you know, feeling good to go, go talk. You got, to you got enough, <laughs> you know, enough bravado yeah, was, to muster up a conversation. Good. <laughs> That's actually Chef Rock's background job on the show. So, okay. you know, that's an important game. We yeah. love that. We love that. Yeah. Um, so, so you met Katie. You're getting married in October. Yeah. All right. A, a solid handful of the boys will be yeah. invited. I know, you know, it'll be there as long as they're available. Correct. Yeah. Um. Do you feel, do you feel, and this is a very broad sense, but do you feel like having a partner, a significant other makes you a better rugby player or, or has enhanced your game? Oh yeah. hundred percent. Absolutely. Like, I mean, you know, like with rugby, like, or any sport, really any professional sport in general, like there's like so many like highs, but like, there's also so many lows and like, it's also the extreme on both ends. Like the highs are like so high and like lows can be so low. Mm-hmm. So like, she's been there to support me, you know? Ever since we met, you know, after every game, like she's been there, like helping me get through it, like help you know, bounce back. Help me bounce back, you know. I'm I'm a down, you know. We lose or something, and, you know. She's there for me, so yeah. 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 She's amazing. And she makes you way more confident than what you can be <laughs> on a normal day. Yeah, exactly. That's why I always love. Like Rosie is totally my like my backbone, you know. Yeah. 
and she sees she sees me for like the best version exactly. of me and yeah. like she holds me to that standard so sometimes yeah. she can be tough but like at the same time just always having someone in your corner that believes in you i i yeah. feel has always been a strong part of of having you know a ball and chain yeah so yeah. to speak <laughs> you know yeah um so going into next season uh, is there any plans in this off season? I know I've been telling you that you should hook up with Corbs. Yeah. You trying to, you trying to train or what? Yeah, I'm down. I know, I know I, I talked to him. Um, yeah, I, I need to talk to him. So I'm going to say, yeah. yeah, I need to talk to him. Just, you know, he's a local guy. I know, um, mm -hmm. get some training in. I know he's, he's a busy dude though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? for sure. Well, how, how do you feel? And, and I have an opinion on this, so I can, I can talk as well, but how do you feel about the importance of like an S and C and, and like having a relationship or someone that you can trust, help you like guide the boat or a skills coach? I mean, I think it's super important. You know, otherwise it's just me kind of figured like wading through the waters, trying to figure out what to do, mm. you know? So I think it's super important, especially, you know, especially like a, like a scrum coach as well, because like scrummaging, it's like so technical. There's like so many things like, you know, that you need to like think of during it. And like, so, you know, sometimes you might, you know, you miss one little thing here, miss one little thing there. Something that just needs to be like turned on, you know, like a skills coach will tell you just like, a little like flip of the switch, like turn on like, okay, yeah, I need to do that. Or like a little technique adjustment right. or something. So. Do you have a light bulb, a light bulb technique moment that you could share with maybe any aspiring young props that like, it was just a moment where the light bulb switched on for you light bulb technique and you were, and you were getting, you were getting coached. Yeah. I think one would be like, like Patty, like year two, you know, he was helping us out in the yeah. scrum a lot. And like, I was always like, when I was going for my bind, you know, I'm just going like a, kind of like a slow, like bind like this, you know, like, he's like, he's like, you just gotta rocket that thing out there and like stun him with it, you know? Yeah. Like, it's gotta yeah. be like quick like that. You know, I'm just like, oh, like that's, okay. that's like a huge like improvement. That's just like, it's just a matter of just putting that idea like in my head. So yeah. like, stuff like that. Yeah, man, that's yeah. good. That's good. Well, Nate Dog, um, you know, I, I've been getting, keeping you talking. You haven't been able to enjoy your food that much. It is a, it, it's been a pleasure to sit and chat with you, though, my brother. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate it. I appreciate you giving me the time today. And, you know, everybody on the, on the Quick Tap Rugby Podcast, yeah. it's good to have another family member. Yeah, I know man, Pete exactly. Malcolm's been on. He's your training buddy. So yeah. shout out to Pete. <laughs> shout you, out got, to Pete. you guys grinding, rubbing horns. Yeah during the week <laughs> all the time but uh yeah man just appreciate your time and obviously yeah, shout out me. to fort oak again yeah. for having us and allowing us to be here today uh we'll catch you guys back in the studio welcome back hey that was a great interview man wow, that was awesome. forward, one thing i look forward to is being invited to the wedding as being sponsored <laughs> yeah. and, and funded by the trust group the trust restaurant and um, so I look forward to that man so I hope I get my invitation my man you know what I'm saying make, hey, make, yeah. sure, you, make sure you put me on his list he may not want to put me on his list but you put me on the list you know so <laughs> I want to get to the trust restaurant <laughs> yeah yeah Nate and Katie they're gonna have a great wedding it's gonna be awesome and I forgot to mention as well Nate was also starred in a product rugby promo video so shout out uh, to you for doing that really yeah. appreciated having him on it was uh it was a fun little event that we did that we were able to make yeah, I saw yeah. I saw that video. It was awesome. It was awesome. I like that shirt, by the way. I need to get me one, brother. Yeah. You know yeah no. you get, Who do you know? Who do you know? I need yeah. I need I need a five I need a five XL though. You know what I'm saying? So I need, I, need, I, need a, I need a big one. I can't get a small shirt like that. You know what I'm saying? Well, oh, you like, like to wear tight? You like to wear tight t-shirts? <laughs> <Yes. laughs> Listen here, dude. Listen here. I'm sure you wear a six XL too, homie. Hey, don't, don't be trying hey, to play hey, around. You know what? You know what I'm quick, saying? Quick story. Yeah. Quick story. I actually, I'm all uh, between two and three X. So yeah. I'm over in Hawaii, right? And I go, oh, I got to get some new shirts. I go in and it's like the kids section. See, I got a Hawaii shirt on right there. X, right? <laughs> That's there you go, brother. But they yeah. start at three X in the kids department. Right. <laughs> that, was the, that was the amazing thing. Hey. I've never seen like nine X. And no, the Costco, they had nine X t-shirts. And every uh, time I, I go to, every time I go to, a every time I go to Hawaii, I always, when I buy t-shirts, and so I can always find T-shirts with like logos and stuff. Well, like this one I'm wearing right now, 
The thing is, if yeah, you're in it, right. and it's over here in California, you buy, try to buy a T-shirt, you have to go to a specialty store or a big man store <laughs> to get a shirt for myself, dude. So, yeah, yeah. I like shop, I like shopping in Hawaii. So, listen, like I, like always, gentlemen, yeah. another great another great episode. Thank you, Nate, for the interview. Thank you, guys. Thanks, thanks for our guests to come on the show, and uh, you know, we'll see you guys next time. Quick tap out. Quick tap out. Thanks, CJ. Quick, quick tap out. out.